so what's a malcontent? Well, we all know Philip is definitely a malcontent. Now, rather than just hurl an insult and just to attack the man when he's at his, uh, I guess this is his peak or as low as he, it, it's definitely not as low as he can go. However, just so we can keep things in perspective, because remember, I am pro Philip, not anti Philip. But let me clarify. I do believe there is hope for this man. But damn, it's taken a lot. So let's look at a malcontent kind of person. The definition. Now, I wrote this down, so I'm just showing y'all my notes, which is my thought process, because I like to write on everything. A discontented person, one who bears a grudge from a sense of grievance. Tell me that's not Philip or thwarted ambitions. Look at this next part here underlined bitter and almost choking with self pity. Is this not Philip? This is Philip as a whole. Matter of fact, I, I, if I if I close my eyes, I think if I go back and try to look in Webster, I thought I saw Philip's face. I really did. I'm not playing. I thought I did. But then I realized that that would mean someone would know who he is outside of YouTube. And let's be honest, Miriam Webster don't know who the, who the hell Philip is. But we do. This is just the beginning. Buckle up, brothers and sisters. Oh, it's on now. The Sinner's Commentary, where no one is safe from a good roasting. As a prophet, I'm commanding you to give it. I, you don't have to wait on God to talk to you. I'm his representative. If you obey my words, God will bless your finances. As a matter of fact, he'll make you a millionaire. If you're already a millionaire, he'll make you a multi-hundred million millionaire or a billionaire. If you obey my voice if you obey the voice of god speaking through me god will bless your finances amen there's that person with that job again i'm telling you there's a person that has a terrible situation a job and it's caused a financial problems it's brought unnecessary pressure and stress upon the home and the family what i've noticed is that tips are very low now today we did not hit a tier two tips goal on either stream, we didn't even hit the tier one tips goal on the, the Mirror's Edge stream, all right? That's bad. But that is a word for a person right now that is God penetrating your heart. It's burning on the inside of you, and you need to make a vow of faith of $1,000. Oh, Bob, couldn't you say 25? No! You can't make a $1,000 vow of faith. I'm saying in faith. So we got people that don't have... Teenagers that have no, hardly nothing going for them. They got enough faith to make a thousand dollar bow and send a little five dollars here and ten dollars there as God begins to move like a whirlwind in their lives. What that means is people think it's cool to give the memberships. It is. But I need tips to get through normal stuff with my business. Tips are my liquidity. Tips are how I afford buying games. So when I re-up my Nintendo online membership for this weekend. I need this that the reason why Jesus hadn't come is because people are not giving the way God told them to give. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Wow. I mean, when you understand, it, you can speed up the time. That's a factor. That's what I pay for. Um, I'm playing a new game on Sunday. Guess what? If tips are slow all weekend, I can't buy a new game. It has to be something that I have access to for free. You see? To when we get to heaven, I can guarantee you there's not a single one of you that's going to be saying, I wish you hadn't have encouraged me to give so much and that I'd have got my fifth flat screen TV and that I would have had more jewels and fancier clothes and a nicer car. All that stuff will be gone. It's only what you invest in the kingdom that is going to benefit you for eternity. You're going to come up to me and hug my neck and kiss me and say, thank you, thank you, thank you for getting that money out of my pocket. Tuesday is my day off. I need to, you know, do things like grocery shopping, have a meal out with my wife once a week. That's what the tips are for. So if tips dry up all weekend because people are so excited to do the gifted memberships. That's going to hurt me. All right. Jesus God! In the short term, I won't be able to even afford stuff. So I want you guys to understand that, that please, just because we have gifted memberships, I appreciate those who are going above and beyond to support the channel. But understand that please don't forego the short term support that I really, really need to make ends meet. Really?
All right, today was not a good day. Between the two streams, I didn't even raise $100. So hopefully things turn around tomorrow, okay? Now, <clears throat> excuse me. Tomorrow, what are the streams? So we see here, because... Philip liked to make make his point of saying that's my liquidity of my business. That's the access to my funds so I can do things for my business. Well, in this episode, we are not only going to debunk this idea that he has a business. Not only will I do that, I'm going to prove it just by the very definition of what liquidity is and what a business is. And we're going to show you just how much of a clown this man is. Again, I'm pro Philip. Not anti-Philip, but damn, it makes it hard. So let's look at the definition of liquidity. Liquidity means how to quickly you can get your hands on your cash. In simpler terms, liquidity is to get your money whenever you need it. Now, let's be straight. Philip, when he described liquidity, he's actually talking about the people that donate. He's not talking about the actual money. His liquidity are the people that he can squeeze to get some money out. Problem is, it, it, it's kind of it's kind of self-explanatory, right? That is very volatile. He doesn't know what he's going to get per stream whatsoever. He has no idea what stream is going to be hidden, what stream is going to be missing. All he knows, he gets to put some goofy hats on or Put on some stupid glasses. Who the hell think that's a reward? Some glasses. These, these pay chairs, man, Lord, God bless them. They are either the dumbest fools you will ever run across in your life. Or they're more forgiving than I am. And I find that really hard to understand. So liquidity, liquidity might be your emergency savings. <laughs> Uh, Philip ain't got no savings. So liquidity might be your emergency savings account or the cash line with you that you can access in case of unforeseen happening or any financial setback. That's Philip every day. He's in an everyday financial setback. Philip is the only dude that gets bills weekly. I don't look. We all get billed once a month. You know, we get we get our light bill. We get all those kind of things. Philip gets like three light bills a week. I don't know where. I don't know what he's lighting up. I don't know if he's lighting up all of Washington. I don't know if what I don't know what he's doing. But I can tell you this much: nobody can lie that bad and think that everybody is going to believe it. Unfortunately, there are. For every nut, there's a wrench, and Philip is definitely twisting some nuts. That didn't come out right. But you know what I'm saying. You've seen his stream. It's pretty gross and cringy. So Philip doesn't have cash lying around. This doesn't exist. Uh, and you can access it in case of unforeseen happening or financial setback. Philip couldn't for look. Philip barely sees himself in the mirror, let alone he can see foreseen some stumbling block that's going to be rolling up. Oh, I just had a bill that came out of nowhere for a thousand dollars. Who? doesn't know when they that a big major bill is coming nobody is that negligent well it could be philip but i just know he's lying he's lying through his teeth flat out he's lying through that bad hair wig he wears because look anybody could tell i mean he's italian here i've seen the ball spots i proved that unless he just got look unless cat cut his hair with a chainsaw or with the paper or what i don't know what is a potato those potato peelers that dude is wearing a wig. I'm sorry. He's wearing a toupee. He, he probably bought it through Dollar Tree or, you know, discount hair clubs for men or whatever. But that is a toupee. You can't go from nearly scalped to a full head of hair. And it's still black, mind you. His, his, look, my beard is gray, but I've earned my mind. Phillip's just gray just because he's getting old. And I mean, Philip isn't just old. He's, he's 40 years old. He's damn near pushing 60. One, he doesn't learn. Two, he doesn't learn. Three, he doesn't learn. Four, we can go all the way to all the way up to 100. He don't learn. And every time he jumps to try to say, I'll make some changes, they always come from a point of desperation when the tips are low. Oh, the support is low. 
No, dog, that's your saggy socks because you've been wearing them. Ain't bought no new clothes since you knew since you went new John Rambo. That's the last time you bought some drawers from Walmart. You know, Dillip, you probably buy used underwear. I'm not going down there. So if you have cash and easy access to fund and a great deal comes along, then it's easy for you to cease that opportunity, seize that opportunity. Cash, savings account, checkable account are all liquid assets because they can be easily converted into cash when required. The only thing that Phil could convert to cash is his ass. That's it. Because somebody go buy it. Somebody will sleep with you, Phil, if you had to get to that point. I'm not saying I want you to get to that point, but somebody is always willing to buy some ass. I'm just, look, it's out there. We live in a world where ass is often on Instagram for the right price. So I'm sure, look, anybody can get anybody on a good payday. I'm just saying, if I get to that point, I hope it don't. But the only way he will get real assets, if he starts selling the very things that he's using, for his business. He'd have to sell his PS5. He'd have to sell his PS4. But I guarantee if he took to a pawn shop, they're going to need three forms of ID and someone else to sign because nobody trusts him. Nobody trusts Philip. Philip barely trusts Philip. Every time he does look in the mirror, he don't know who he's looking at because he is so confused on what reality is. He's talking about liquidity as if he has a business. Phil ain't got no business. They don't, the only thing that Philip knows about liquidity is in his bowels if he eats too much of a Taco Bell of some sort. That's the only liquidity he understands. Everything, nothing in this statement, nothing in these beautiful definitions and descriptions does Philip understand how that works. Somehow he is equates this thing he calls a business to where he could use these terms to try to slide it over on his pay chairs. Well, today... We pulling the hoods off, brother. Liquidity. Come on, get some Pepto-Bismol before you get these terms right. Now, I am about to step my foot in something. I, I know a little about this running business, but this is some deep level stuff. But I ain't never scared. I walk up to any year, no matter how many dudes is up there trying to take care of business, I'm still go elbow my room in and get myself so I can relieve myself. So right now, none of that was even relevant to what we're talking about. But I'm just saying I ain't scared to get up here with the big boys. I can roll with them. So this is a tip. And I got this from um the what is this place called? The Finance Storyteller. Thank you very much. So the way he explained it, definitely look at it on his channel. It's definitely some high level, big brain stuff. I'm not saying my, I'm not, a, I can't get to that big brain, but my brain is still stepping up. I ain't scared. So you got your, so here's where the big thing that, that uh, we're dealing with here. So we got cash, which is your, your liquidity. You know, the thing that you have that you can use right then and there, your accounts receivable is what you can, what you're billing your customers. In this case, Philip is putting up what his memberships, He's putting up, you know, definitely uh, uh, peddling for his super chat, super thanks, uh, super enemas or whatever you call it. And then you have your inventories. Now, Philip doesn't have an inventory. Now, the only way we can kind of consider it an inventory is his backlog of games. You know, those are considered his inventory. And then there's fixed assets, which based, so basically let's, let's explain this why he, he explained it because I'm going to try to get this together. And I'm sure I'll butcher it, but you can go back and take a look and correct me. So in order to make money, you got it. What your inventory has to do, what you got to sell it. Right. So then when you sell it, you got it. And then once you sell it into the, to the customer and the customer, you, you get pay, you pays you and then you get your cash. Now your fixed assets, they are what he, what we would like to call for Philip would be his chair, his setup, his microphone, his uh, game consoles, his, his, his ear, ear protection uh, bone that he wears around his neck. Um, things like that. Those are fixed assets. They really don't, they, he can't make money on them unless he goes and sells them. And then his goodwill is what the intangibles are worth. Okay. So this is, this is referring to something on Microsoft. We're not you and that we're just trying, I'm just trying to show you what, what, what it looks like for Philip. So we can both know this is definitely not a business for him. So your goodwill is our intangible assets. The things like an intangible, a good way of good, looking at goodwill or intangible assets is intellectual properties. So every single YouTuber 
that plays a video game, whether it's Destiny 2, one of my favorite, Division 2, Fortnite, what have you, that's an intellectual property being used, and so its value is what? It's very high. So anytime one of these these one of these publishers want to say, you know what, dude, we're done with you rep you representing us, we pulling your stuff, or they decide to just destroy YouTube and, and one side of it or all these playthroughs, they can do so because they own it. So it the intangibles to that is invaluable to people YouTubers, especially Philip. But that's how much it's worth and from the intellectual properties. Now, does Philip actually have any goodwill? Something that's intangible that he owns that if the tips dry up today, let's say no one ever tipped him again, would his, would his company have any value? Well, when you look at the fixed assets, you could say, well, if he sells those, well, the only way fixed assets work is they what? They're going to need an inventory. You got to build something. So your fixed assets typically for Philip would be his PS4, his PS5, his his Xbox Series X, his Xbox whatever, whatever and whatever. His PC, if he ever plays it, his Nintendo Switch. He has all these little consoles. In order for him to make money or to have an inventory to where he can actually sell something, he has to rely on YouTube's intangibles. So he has to rely on a business model that he didn't create. He doesn't really facilitate anything with it. He's benefiting from the groundwork that has been done by a major company. Okay. So his goodwill doesn't exist because his intangibles would have to be him as an intellectual property. He would have to prove that he's valuable to where what people would invest in it. And that's where the tips and the super chats and super thanks and super whatever's come in. Right. So when we're looking at this from a technical standpoint, from Phillips way, and I'm sure I'm not explaining this well, but I'm trying. Give me some credit here. So his fixed assets in order to make money, you typically for a business for fixed assets would be your fixtures. It'd be your, um, you know, like a Walmart, you got your fixtures, you got your building, you got your cash registers, you got your, your refrigerator, whatever, whatever, whatever. In order to turn that into money, you got to put what? You got to put stuff on in those things. You got to put goods on shelves. You got to put food inside those, those refrigerators. You have to put things in there. So what will happen? So that way you can sell your goods and your product. That goes into your account receivables. You've got to make money by what? By selling the inventory. Otherwise, just sitting there. And then, of course, you get paid your cash after everything is all the bills are paid. Whatever you have left, there's your cash. There is his liquidity. And that is meant to invest back into your business. You know, like you just said, the previous episode, in the previous episode, the previous video, that's what we use when we want to see an opportunity for me. Uh, whatever cash I get for liquidity it's I just got thanks to my my, you know, uh, one of my huge backers that I have. And I say huge backer. I mean, he's just a good brother in Christ. And any donations I get, I was able to get this beautiful microphone, which is which has the noise canceling, which improves sound. I got me a just got it today. It just came in, which is a selfie ring, which is those real big ones. So I can get better lighting on my face. So that way I can improve that. So these things that I'm spending the cash out to invest in. This is what you're supposed to be able to do with your liquidity. When there's, you see a, an opportunity, you want to say, take some cash and do it. Philip doesn't have a cash reserve. Philip doesn't have anything in safe. Well, he might. We don't know. He can be pretty secretive. I just don't think he does. But if we really look at these things from Philip's point of view, well, actually, that'd be silly because we can't. We got to look at this from a, a, a realistic point of view. So between what well, since Philip doesn't have an inventory, but if he says, well, we can look at it like it's his video games, okay? It's his video games. He doesn't own them. Sure, he bought them. That's just a license agreement, right? He just bought it and he uses it on his stream. Great, fantastic. But it's not inventory. It's not anything. That, he's not really adding anything as a transformative property, if you want to be technical. He sits down, plods to a video game at the worst possible way, and expects that that is is equating to well see me playing video games you have to tip me because i'm giving you a product and you're buying it because you're watching it so that means you have to tip otherwise why are you watching it we all know that that's what philip wants to say so if you're watching this content whether on demand or live and you like it and you enjoy the playthrough tip 
I don't, well, Philip, we don't owe you nothing, dog. Matter of fact, if I walk into Walmart right now and, and stay in there for six hours and walk back out, I don't owe them a thing, period. That's my choice whether I want to buy something. That's my choice if I care about purchasing something in the inventory. It's my choice. I don't care if I enjoyed everybody I talked to. I don't care if I enjoyed every single team member, every single interaction with a customer, and I enjoyed it from top to bottom. I don't owe them anything. That's what you're there for as a business, right? You're there for people that do have a need. You're there to give people an offer. And there's stores all over the place that gives offerings. So the only thing that makes these stores different is what? Your pricing, maybe the different type of products that you have. Maybe you have some high-end stuff. Maybe you have some, some really high-end stuff. Whatever, whatever, whatever. Philip is in a situation where we're in a... Look, YouTube is a hot market. Everyone today alone, someone is making... Right as we make videos being published, or by the time you're reading it, somebody's making... Of, of YouTube channel and they're going to be putting their 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 passion project in there and it's every day and we're all competing for your time and you have the right as a viewer to pick and choose who you want to listen to whether you want to subscribe whether you want to like whether you want to dislike whether you want to comment or you just want to move through it and not do anything that is your prerogative and for anybody to demand or try to pressure or emotional manipulate you to buy something or tip him or 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 get super, send a super thing just because you took time out of your day to watch his piss poor streams, you don't owe him nothing. Nothing. You don't owe me anything. I'm glad to get the comments I have. I'm glad to get the likes that I have. I'm glad to see the subs uh, come in. Those things are are, are precious to me. But in no way do you owe me any of that. I could put these videos out every single day. Y'all could watch them and never like any of them, never do anything in them. And that is your prerogative. But to sit back as Philip does and demand that people, and you know that's what he's doing. I don't see the big problem. If you're, gonna, if you're already watching the content, just hit like. I don't have to. I don't have to. And if you're going to press me to do it, I definitely ain't going to hit the like button. I might even hit the dislike button just out of spite. But you know what I'm saying. I'm not saying I do that, but you get where I'm going. So as a business, imagine if you went into Walmart right now, and as you walk by, they went, okay, uh, Mr. Miller, you've been in here for the last three hours. You know, since you've enjoyed Walmart, and it's been comfortable. It was hot outside. It's 190,000 degrees outside, and we got it in this brisk 67 in here. You know, it would be nice if you just purchased something to show your thanks for walking into Walmart. I would tell them to kiss my whole ass. I don't owe them nothing. If I have to pay for time in there or just to show my love by giving them a little, a few dollars, I don't have to go in there. But Philip treats his streams as if they are pay per stream, which is exactly what he's doing. Not even Netflix does. They bill you once a month. Philip is billing people daily on something that he doesn't even own and he has no right to even send a bill to. But he treats his tips as if it is a salary that he's earned he's earned nothing but an ass whooping that's it that's all he's earned so if we look at this from a business standpoint he has no goodwill he has no assets that literally is worth anything his intangibles are what what is this intangible he doesn't have charisma okay he doesn't have if 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 push comes to shove and youtube says we're not we're no longer doing super chat super thanks super nothing you have to get by on pure views what's philip gonna do what is what could philip do because that would mean he have to take his ps4 his fixed assets and try to make what videos but since all he does is raw gameplay because that's the minimum he effort he wants to give that's as far as he wants to do he just wants to sit down be horrible at a game and the only time he gets excited is when he's talking about support and i don't mean excited like he's happy he's pissed because some people, there's 230 people in the stream. He has six likes and no tips, and he's offended. Bro, they could be someplace else, dog. They could be doing anything else. Most of the people in there are trolls and watching you crash and burn, which you haven't figured that out yet. But then when the few audience people that are there for you, you don't even know how to please them or even what they're there for. You've been in business. <clears throat> 
You've been streaming for 13 years and you are still signing like you did 13 years ago. Except 13 years ago, you made some claims that you act like you didn't make. So let's all be straight about this. Let's cut to the mustard. Let's get right down to the middle of the meat of the sandwich. Philip has no burnable cash because whenever he has something, hey, why don't you upgrade your microphone or your, your camera? I can't, dude. All, all my money's tied up. Well, we just tipped you 200 some dollars the other two days. Oh, that went straight to bills. No, it didn't. No, it did not. Because how do you have a perpetual behind? How are you perpetually behind, Philip? You know, it don't even make logical sense. But yet, some of the, the mentally handicapped folks that's in his stream, I, I'm not trying to be nasty. I don't make jokes about that. But he's taking advantage of some gullible people. These are the same people that probably fall for the Microsoft scam. Your car insurance is lapsed. Um, you got a check coming from a prince in Nigeria. You know, there got to be those guys. Because, it, or, and, and or not, not really or, and, the kind of scumbags that Philip is, they promote each other. Scumbags look after scumbags, much as good people look after good people, and vice versa. You know what I mean? You furs of, of a feather, it's the same feather flock together. So miserable jerks and poisonous sons of chickens hang out together. So that's a lot of Philip's people. Except they probably have some measure of friendship in their life. Um actually I'm just being hopeful. They probably don't. But their interaction with Philip is probably a highlight of their day. Can you imagine if that was the highlight of your day interacting with Philip? I'd rather get circumcised again with a dull butter knife with a man with cataracts. It just, it, it, I know it ain't gonna go well, but it would still be more entertaining than watching and spending time with Philip. Just, it don't even sound good to me. You see the look on my face, it don't even sound good. So let's wrap this up so we can understand what kind of liquidity Philip has. None. He has no intangibles, so he has no goodwill. He has nothing that he can leverage when nothing else. Let's say like the cash dried up. Is there anything he could sell quickly in order to what? Get his business back up. Well, once he sells his PS4, he no longer has an inventory to play the games on. If he sells his PS5, he no longer has an inventory to sell his game on. I mean, play his game and make, make videos on. If that's the case, he doesn't have anything for people to tip to. Which means what? After all the bills are paid, he has no cash. That's where his business is. And we just getting started, man. It gets much worse. So here, we're going to really discuss five common causes that if Philip was running a business, if he was, which he isn't, but if he was, there's a five main things that we can examine to see if Philip has done these things. Poor cash flow management. <laughs> we didn't take long to get there. Losing control <laughs> of finances. Bad planning and lack of strategy. Weak leadership. I don't think anybody listening to this video and the sound of my voice thinks that Phil's leadership has ever been anything but weak. And oh, over dependence on a few big customers. I can end the video right here. We done. Done. Hit like and subscribe if you enjoy the channel. Wait to see more. I can end it right here. All of this makes sense. But you didn't tune in for me to cut it short. You tuned in for me to understand and, and, and open up Phil's mind and see what's going on in there. So we'll get right back to it. Buckle up, man. It's about to get so here we are. There, here's, here's the shocker of the universe. Poor cash flow management. And this is the guy writing, cash is king, but it doesn't change the fact that poor cash flow management can lead to the demise of any business. Indeed, even a profitable business can fall victim to a crippling cash flow crisis, which is often caused by the ineffective management of debtors, high stock levels, bad debt, and late invoicing, inadequate financing, or selecting the wrong type of funding for your business can also put it on the path of failure without access to sufficient growth capital. Whether in the form of personal savings, private equity, or debt finance, your business may not have the fuel it needs to grow. This one settles all of it right now for Philip. Now, we can see in the last few years, last 10, 15 years, 
how many companies have be- went belly up, not just before COVID, but just bad management. Uh, we have Circuit City. We have um, what Borders book. Ooh, I, used to, I miss Borders so much. We have Sears. One of my that was my that's my home family sh- you know, family business in there. We all most of our majority of my family has worked at Sears, and I loved Sears. Uh, we see Kmart falling at the wayside. Um, Woolsworth. We got there's numerous business. We got GameStop living on living on the blood of the employees. They are vampires. I don't know how they making it, but you can see how poor management of funds and having stock that they can't sell. I mean, stock like inventory. You've seen them high-ass games. Why am I going to buy a PS2 game for $70? It's a PS2. Well, you know, it's a one-of-a-kind, one-of-a-kind, my chicken. But you get the idea. When you do, when you have bad, you when you deal with your money poorly, how do you keep the lights on? How are you able to purchase things to keep stay up to the, the market? How do you buy when the new trendy thing comes up? Do you have money in order to jump on that? Or did you do enough market research before you did jump on that trend and it died about 20 seconds after you put money into it? How many times has Philip showed up late to the party and expecting maximum output? Don't worry, I'll wait. It won't be long. And let's be straight. He can get paid. If he got paid $800 on the stream yesterday, The next day, I am sure as rain is wet, he would blow through it somehow. And he would be back to square one doing what? Begging for the next day as if nothing ever happened. He just does it all the time. We know he's he's burning his money somewhere, whether it's WWE champions trying to pay for his roommate because the agreed upon salary has to be met or cats out. It's that simple. I believe that it could. I could totally be theorized. It could be a theory, but I believe it. That's paid for, and she ain't got to do nothing because clearly it was not the deal she signed up for. But still, she's keeping that contract. That con- oh, Philip, you you can't miss them payments, man. Your the salary made, which I'm sure she just cleans up her room. Which cat, I don't blame you, sister. You do what you got to do. I ain't mad at you. But the biggest thing with Philip is, is ineffective management of cash. His debtors, we, we look, I'm not the best at cash management either. I am not. I'm getting better and it, t- it sucks that it took this long, but it's better late than never. Right. And when you look at someone like Philip and you look at, you know, my brother once told me something um, that, you know, uh, money management is hereditary. People, you have to, you know, you kind of learn how you deal with money from your parents for the most part. Some guys are, and some women are just built to where they become very budget conscious, maybe because they've been in houses that struggle. Maybe they've seen other people that struggle. So they reacted to it and they have now found a way to, 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 you know, uh, what is it? Uh, monitor their assets, monitor their, 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 their money. So that way they're not struggling at the end of the month. They got some money set aside. Philip doesn't see money being set aside other than if he set it aside in something because he needs his instant fix. Philip is in such a miserable state. He lives for the purchase. Why? Just to feel a little bit better. Just to feel a little bit better. And when you look down at at, at inadequate financing or selecting the wrong type of funding for your business, Philip has selected tips to be how he's going to grow his business. The most volatile thing you could ever choose, he chose it. He's not trying to rely on AdSense. He's not trying to rely on views. He's not trying to. He is hoping 100% in tips. He don't give a damn about membership. It takes too long to come back. He has no, he has no, no long stretch goal, no long thinking. He doesn't, his, his brain doesn't have that kind of elasticity. Philip is what's in my hand today is all I want. That's all I can see. And I get it. I've been there. But I also knew that if I go to work every day, in two weeks, my check's going to look like this. Philip doesn't know what he's going to look from day to day, and yet he's mad that it's not consistent. It's tips. That's optional, bro. You can't monetize tips. You can't do You can call it on demand all you want. No one owes you anything. And when you place a business model on tips, think of it. Look, let's, let's be honest. How many waitresses, waiters, bartenders that do live for tips okay they do tips do really help get them in because they, you know they're underpaid you know they don't get well i don't know about bartenders but you get about 
you don't get full minimum wage. You get two dollars and some change. So your tips matter. Now, is that a way to live your life? Could you really live and have a nice apartment and, and and not feel like, man, I don't feel like going to work today? You have to go to work because you're living on those tips. Philip is Philip is working six days a week streaming and still can't get ends to meet. That's scary. Think about that. That is frightening that he, we watch this this pale dude. I mean, he just, he looked all the colors out of his face. He's got bags under his eyes. He looks 55,000 years old. He looks like Moses if Moses was on crack. This dude looks sickly. His body's not looking good. His face doesn't look good. His hair doesn't look healthy. We, we know he has gastrointestinal issues because he's burping and belching and, and, and all that kind of crazy nonsense. I know he's sick and it hurts my heart. But man, you do this to yourself, Philip, because everything in your mind is wrapped up in money because for some reason it's never enough. And here's the thing. If you're in business, in order for you to have that idea that it's never enough, because I'm we're in business today, right? I'm in business. Just if I sold whatever I sell today, it doesn't really matter for tomorrow because tomorrow I got to sell again. So I have to look forward to what? Making sure that I do the same thing I did yesterday. And push the envelope a little bit because I can't just guarantee a customer is going to walk in. But when they do come, I got to maximize my service to that customer. So that way, guess what? Even if nobody else comes in, that customer got the best of everything I have. Philip could care less about any of the people that's on his stream at all. If you're not, if you're not giving him support, you are irrelevant. And you're only as relevant as the tip comes in. Once the tip is gone, you back to nobody to him. To Phillips fans and his cheerleaders and his jockstrap holders, you are nothing more than a ATM to him, period. You're not a friend. You're not an acquaintance. He'll tell you that. You don't know me. I don't know you. This is just a transaction. Hookers have a stronger relationship with their Johns. Strippers have a better relationship with the people that put tips in their G-string. Philip has an adversarial relationship with the very people that keep his life afloat and he hates them. What kind of foolishness is that? How's that a business? You name a business that treats their customers like trash and wonder if it's still around. Don't worry, I'll wait. You know they on, they're on borrowed time when they treat customers like, like dog snot. People can vote you out of business with their money. I don't get no money to this place. Another customer don't get money to that place. That place starts starving and trying to figure out and coming desperate. Well, how we go do? How we go get money in here? Because people aren't coming in. Does it sound familiar to what Phillips doing right now? No, it does. Because there's a shortage. The type of funding that he's using for his business, <clears throat> business, is tips. It's volatile as hell. He can't rely on a consistent day because there is no such thing as a consistent day in tips. He can put that tips goal up all he wants. It doesn't equate to anybody has to do it because he doesn't have a product that he's selling. He doesn't have anything. Look, for streamers, successful streamers that, that live their life and streaming is their business model. Are they really relying on just that one revenue stream? No. They have what? They have a personality. They're the intangible asset and they leverage that by getting merchandise, by getting deals, you know, sponsorships. Um, they go out and try to make, they try to take the money that they're getting because they're getting older every day and their audience can out, can basically can outgrow them. You know, they basically can mature out and say, I don't like dealing with that content no more. I'm gonna move on to something else. A lot of Fortnite guys go through that. You know, you have the youth movement there, then the youth get older and they don't wanna deal with that no more. Well, how do you keep getting fresh? How do you, how do you keep the stuff going? Well, you gotta have another revenue stream. So when one starts to wane, the other one is still going strong. And then you wanna branch out and do something else. Philip has not only all his eggs in the basket, he keeps the ducks and chickens in there too. They can't even go out. How do you expect to make it, Philip, when you are the one strangling your business because you hate profitability? I never thought I could say that. What company hates profitability? Philip does. Philip sees as 
get being a good streamer, a conscientious streamer, a streamer that cares about his viewership, that cares about his videos, that cares about his content, that cares about the people that spend money uh, and tip him. He he does, he sees that those things as wrong and insincere. It's not genuine to like your audience. What kind of new fool is that? I don't even understand the, the, the his logic on that. I keep it real, man. I'm telling you how I feel. I'm complaining all the time because I don't kiss ass. You're complaining because you're never satisfied, homeboy. That's not honest. That's you being an ass. That's you being a miserable malcontent because you des what you think you deserve, people don't see the same value in you that you do. And yet you put yourself at this high value. Look, you are drinking wine with beer money. You can't do it. You just can't. You're not that guy. You haven't learned to leverage what you do have because everything that you have that's a possible plus, you see that as kissing butt, shilling, and everything else. And then in the same breath, you'll turn around and say, well, uh, the, the detractors keep me from having sponsorships. No, they're not. Because you know what it takes to silence a detractor? It's real easy. Own up to your stuff. Stop trying to ch change the narrative to favor you. And watch how easy... You will have sponsors fighting with you. They'll be like, man, look, we stick with Philip because he, he, you know what? He stands by his product. He stands by his word. He's willing to own up. People are willing to give you a second chance, Philip, but you don't look, if you was a cat with nine lives, you've been, you would have been dead and gone already, bro. But you still got a few tails left. You still got a life left and you're burning through it. And you don't even see the people that you abuse most are the people that support you the most. And you wonder why your cash flow doesn't work. Your liquidity is not working. Man, I got more than this. We still going. Now, let's look at losing control of your finances. This writes itself. This sells itself. I can close the video out here. That ain't what you tuned in for. So losing control of your finances. Any business owner needs to be aware of their financials. In this case, his tips. His and his cash position at any given time, the accurate forecasting of income and costs may lead to a few surprises, but it will ultimately help support your cash flow. Well, we know Philip ain't doing that. Business owners should also understand and control their costs, acknowledging risks and opportunities, which should help minimize any nasty surprises. Employing an experienced accountant or investing in a good cloud-based accounting solution can help ease the burden of financial management, allowing you to focus on day-to-day -day business operations. Philip ain't got no controls in place. Philip ain't got no controls in place. I wonder if, if, if he has a wife in the next room. I'm sure that if he turns some of the finances over, now nah, he might end up on forensic files. Never mind. Um, but I mean... He can hire an account like that lawyer that he's hired that's pilfering him dry. He can hire somebody to help do these things, to keep his finances in order, but he doesn't. You, every business should be aware of their financials and cash position anytime. I guarantee you, anyone that's listening to my voice right now knows what's in your bank, knows what your next bills are gonna be. If there's any late bills around this time of the month, mine is typically like uh, Linktree is right around this time. And for some reason, Apple Music bills in the next week or so, probably almost at the end of the month. And then uh, YouTube Premium just billed last week. So I understand right around this time what bills are going to be hitting. And if you made any payment arrangements, you've got to be aware of those things. And Philip seems to now. I don't know if how much is. Well, I know, you know, he's lying. But how much do you think that he knows about his bills? I think he actually kind of has an idea how many bills he's making, what, what kind of bills he has. What I don't think he's good at is estimating what the tips are going to bring in to balance the books. I just don't say you see that. I might even have to far say and say, I think he's still living in debt right now. Even though the bankruptcy's happened, he's still living beyond his means because I've heard when somebody said, hey, man, why don't you cancel your Netflix? It's $8. A month. What's $8 going to do? Uh, that's That's some gas right now, homeboy. That's some gas. That's money that you, he don't watch that much Netflix anyway. Let Kat pay for it. That's, look, he's paying her to live there. Give her that money. Unless she agreed, hey, you keeping all the Netflix. Then he can't really get rid of it. 
the Game Pass. You ain't got to spend that $10 a month. Why you need it? Look, you got a library full of games. You're the king of retro. You could go back and get some Donkey Kong and make that stuff work. Remember, you're the king of retro. How come you need these new releases? You don't. You, you admit it yourself. You don't play the new releases and blow through them. You wait till everybody else has done it. What kind of logic is that? He waits till the game is dead, and then he goes back and wonder why tips is low. He doesn't understand the basics of how his business works because he's a malcontent. We just saw that, right? We saw that not too f a few videos ago, a little segments ago. He wants to stick it to the system, but he's, he's like backflipping on his own and landing on his own penis. He's shooting himself in the foot and he doesn't care because he thinks it's not happening. He's blaming it's YouTube's fault. How are you blaming a successful business that revolutionized search engines? People search YouTube more than anything else and somehow Philip thinks they're idiots. It only makes sense. If they're idiots, how come you're living off of them? Wouldn't that make you a bigger moron? I, I don't know if I'm gonna get paid over the weekend. I don't know if I'm gonna get my money on time. Well, why are you with them? You can't you go back to Twitch? No, you can't go back to Twitch because Streamlabs ain't gonna take you. They you can't process tips through them anymore. Not gonna happen. And PayPal will not extend that courtesy to you as much as they used to. We all know that. If you see, see my video, go look at those. It's proven. Streamlabs booted him off because he started to threaten their transactions, their business model, their chargeback accounts. That's they're a business, Philip. They have to look at a cost analysis. They've got to be able to control their costs. If they're paying for your failures to make sure that you keep that you're not making detractors more than you're making money, they got to cut you off. You're a liability. YouTube makes so much money you're a pebble in the ocean you're inconsequential to them you can be mad as hell as you want to them and if you quit your if you shut your stream down the day youtube wouldn't care you don't register at all on their level the only way to register that high on youtube is you got to screw up so bad you've got to get a notoriety that gets the actual national news to say this guy philip is a true scumbag you've got to get to edp levels of notoriety and then youtube would be like yeah we can't have you on our site no more man so it's so strange that you're spitting and talking bad on youtube but yet your bread butter your livelihood is living in their backyard how does that make you look philip here's a company that is proven to be successful and they use their liquidity to seize opportunities we're going to we're going to level everything toward um uh what we, what what is it the shorts because we see tiktok blowing up and we see facebook have their and instagram have their reels and stories we want to get our foot in the pot and they they get to do that philip they get to benefit from that they get the liquidity to turn out and try that out they how many uh services have they tried and have buried because it didn't work out but yet they kept looking and innovating they kept trying when you have the liquidity you can make these kind of um hey man we're going to invest here and see how it works you get to stretch yourself a little bit when you have a surplus of cash that you can kind of mess around with to see what's going to what can i what can i take a gamble on that may can be something that might blow up philip you're not in that position you have to keep doing these sit down Play the video game as horribly as possible and beg for tips because you don't have the charisma. You don't want an extra revenue stream because you don't want to build a real business. You want a business that's pretty much. Look, you want to be a parasite living on a healthy donor. I'm not just trying to be ugly, but that's that, tell me that's not true, guys. Tell me that's not true, because if the place becomes unhealthy, Philip gets sick. That's what he sees. That's how he works. So and you have no controls in place over your finances when you don't, you're not able to guess it. Look, tips are as volatile. I'm saying volatile all day. That's the word of the day yet for today. So if he's trying, he can put that tips goal up all he wants. If he doesn't make that tips goal, two, three, four, five, six streams, how does he count that money as a win? How can he put, what is he doing? And then when he does get that money, if he's not meeting the tips goal, let's say, um, out of six days, he made the tips go once. And every other day, it was like $10, $4.
What do you think Phillips going to do? You think he's going to put that money away someplace to where when tips are low again, he's able to what? Reach in there and be able to pay that so that way it's not hurting his back? No. He keeps himself in a perpetual state of distress. For what reason? Because he doesn't have any controls of his finances because he's sitting and he's flying by the seat of his pants and he has no damn clue how to generate money on his own. And he's mad and he cusses of the streamers because they do have controls in place. That don't even make sense, does it? Why are you mad at someone successful when nothing stops you from being successful except you think it'll tarnish your reputation? Your t your reputation is already tarnished. It can't get no worse. It's below rust and bacteria. You may as well try to shield. At this point, shield your ass off, Philip. You need to. But you ain't got no control of your finances because if you did, you wouldn't be out here putting this emotional manipulation on these on these poor pay chairs. And you wouldn't be stressing yourself out so much. You wouldn't. You could eat decently. You could go to bed at a regular time, sitting on a stream for six straight days, eight and 10, 12 hours, sitting in your own juices. That's freaking disgusting, bro. And somehow you haven't managed yet to save money. So that way, if the stream is low, you can still give them a positive outlook. <laughs> positive. You know what I'm saying? Oh, man, you know, tips for low today, guys. But you know what, man? We had a good time. Nobody buys that, Philip. Unless you hit the vest goal. That's the only time we see a smile every other time you're miserable it's just the way it is bad plan and a lack of strategy again i can end the stream here but we keep going failing to plan is planning to fail cheesy but true quite simply long-term planning is key to the success of any business listen to this when mapping out the growth of their business, a business owner needs to conduct market research to establish who their customers are. He's been in business for 13 years and has not a clue who his fan base is. He just doesn't. He can put out the polls. He can put out the, the, the Patreon polls. He can say the, the, the events that's going to come up if we hit the certain membership goal and this, that, and the third. He doesn't know them at all. He doesn't know what drives them. And he'll hear them. Oh man, let's play. Uh, what was that? That what they want him to play, and he did like he just refuses or something like that. What game was that? And he says he'd never play it anyway. It doesn't matter. He has lots of them. Let's say they want him to play the forest, and he just I cannot do it. It doesn't. Ha it has low support. Why not play it? Because the people that are there, which are that small customer base you have, play to that. Sure, you may not get all the tips you want. But they know you're listening. And if you actually had fun, you could branch out from there. And I wouldn't be getting on any branch if I was you. You're still kind of heavy. I wouldn't be getting on no branches or walking out on limbs. But you need to look at the very thing that your customers are asking for and quit thinking that somehow if you do what they've asked and you play a game because they they didn't vote the way they, they people kept saying man please play the forest philip we want to see your reaction on it why not give in to them you already given in when they tell you they vote with their tips right why not lean in and give them what they want hey let's go ahead and do the forest let's go ahead and do marvel uh superheroes let's go ahead and do that this weekend i know it's low support stream but you know what you guys been asking for it let's do it. if you had liquidity you could do that philip so y'all thought I was going to connect that together? Ah, your boy got a little bit. If he had liquidity, he could make those kind of plays. He could have a strategy. Hey, man, next month we're doing Skyrim on a Monday. Hell of high water. It's Skyrim. And, man, I'm dressing up. I ain't got no tips yet, right, Philip? You ain't got no tips yet, but you dress up just like one of them goofy-ass characters. Don't you think somebody would appreciate that? Because regardless of support, you're sticking to it. You know, you like being consistent. How about you do that versus, well, Skyrim is now moved to the daytime, guys, and I don't have enough dollars to buy, you know, one of them 25 cent suckers. So I guess I got to put it back at the night stream. If it's not working, cut it loose. But you have no strategy. Everything's based on what, Philip? What you thought worked in the past. Things change, homie.
Seriously. Memes change. What was a meme last week may not be even relevant anymore. Market research. Okay, here's another thing. You have your same customer base, which are the same people that you squeeze every dime you can out. What about unique viewers? I look at that. I don't have a bad unique viewer uh, ratio right now. It's not bad. It's not great. It definitely isn't bad because I have recurring, you know, viewers and those unique viewers are equally important. You know, where uh, your diehard uh, gamers like to say, oh, I hate casuals. Casuals is what pays the publishers. Casuals is what keeps a game going. That's why you alienate casuals. Your game is going to fail. It's just going to happen. Casuals are part of the ecosystem and we want their business. We want the unique viewer that may not necessarily like you, Philip, but maybe they'll can live with you because you have the gameplay and you're not an obnoxious jackass. So they can at least tolerate you and they might come back and say, well, let me go ahead and deceive. I really don't like the way the guy thinks and acts, but you know what? His playthroughs are on point. You don't even try to look for that, Philip. You have no strategy. If YouTube shut down everything today and say, look, you are only on views. He's dead in the water because he's not tried to develop another revenue stream because that would mean effort and he doesn't want to do it. Philip is content on doing the least amount of work and what maximum amount of profits. It doesn't work. That's his strategy. It doesn't work. He does not look at this. They also need to recognize their competitors and be proactive regarding trends to avoid getting left behind. You don't even care to do that, Philip. I know who my competitors are. And even though I'm in the detractor community, they're still competitors because I still have to compete for the, the views that they have for every 10, 20 videos. I may put one out a week. I still have to compete for their views, right? I don't see that as a bad thing. That means I got to step my game up because I try, I try to go into things a little bit deeper because that's me. You can, they make the videos with the, with, with the, uh, with the title of it. And it has like a theme in it and it rocks the house and it's maybe 10 minutes long. I make 30 minutes or longer videos. So I have my unique views has to where you have to, I have to say, well, it's valuable. Is it valuable to them to sit, sit back, take their time, listen to more than just 11 minutes of something and get moving. I have to step my game up and I'm not mad about that. I just know what my business strategy is. I, and this is not a business yet. Well, I guess you could consider a business. So yeah, cause it has a, there is a plan. There's a goal in place. There is some strategies in place. So yeah, I guess it is a business. Okay, great. So, but the way I look at things is I look at what they're doing and I acknowledge what they're doing and it pushes me further to say, okay, man, they're doing really well with that. I need to step my game up here and stay consistent to the very passion that I do. There's nothing wrong with that. I have rival cell phone repair places around me. There's like seven within about a, a four mile range. It's easy to get to. I am just one of the many. So what sets me apart? I have to find out what they're doing and why customers are going to them. And, and I may not be getting that first call. I got to find out how and what can I do to try to influence for at least I get that phone. Call. I may not get that business for the day, but at least I got that phone call. That's what you do, Philip, when you want to grow your business, when you want to find out what is someone else doing that's making them successful. How can I figure out what that is so that I can implement something similar to my business? And there's not stealing, Philip. That's called strategy. Maybe what they're doing is only getting this much of business, but if you take it, you can expand it and do way more with it. I've done that in my business, Philip. You can do that too, but you see it as stealing and biting off somebody. And well, that's not, this is not working because if somebody else does, I'm my own man. You are not trying to make money, Philip. You are just trying to not drown. That's not a business strategy. That's, that doesn't make anything. It doesn't even make sense. It doesn't work. But why are you thinking that that's the plan? Your business strategy is based on the next greatest video game because you're only invested in the short term. You don't have a plan to when you get older and you can't play video games. What are you going to do? Commentate? We've seen you down the rabbit hole. Ooh. 
we've seen you do the down your down rabbit hole with yourself and uh, your your how you don't plays. You don't give anything. There's no insight. There's no any, there's nothing. It's dry. It's like dry humping in a rubber suit. It's painful to watch. Painful. So you and I see you trying, homie, but your strategy is weak because you don't have any stick to itness. You don't see it every time you bend a little bit to your customers. If you do a, a, a smidge of what the detractors tell you to do to make money, you feel like you're selling out. It don't even make logical sense anymore sometimes, Philip. Let's keep moving. Weak leadership. Philip forever thinks he's the smartest man in the room. That can only be the case if Jasper's not in there. I'm just being real. If Jasper's in there, you are now the dumbest person in that room. Matter of fact, I'm not even look that whatever that one of that figurine you have or the guy from Fallout. I don't know what his name is. I never really I never played Fallout before, but you know his name, the little guy that's up there. As long as he's in that room, Philip, you got there's a challenge of who's the smartest man in the room. Y'all are now neck and neck, and he's a little bit ahead of you, and he don't even do anything. A good leader recognizes the skills they lack or the jobs they do not have time for and either employs, outsources, or seeks professional advice to fill the gaps. Philip listens to nobody. Even when it, there are some detractors that give him fantastic information. Does he listen? Nah. Because if he did it, he's selling out. He's not looking at it as a business strategy. I've been sitting here offering him a chance to come clean that can get him out of a situation. And I cost nothing. It does. I have nothing to gain from it other than when I came across this dude, I saw the plight he was in emotionally, mentally. And I said, man, this dude needs some help before he has a heart attack or something. There's nobody. Every detractor out there knows this boy is sick. And as much as he is a, a car wreck waiting to happen, it's not cool to watch. But do you think he's going to listen to anybody to help benefit him? No, because he thinks everybody else is stupid. I've been doing this for 13 years. Guess what? Venereal diseases have been doing the same thing in people's bodies. It doesn't make it any better. Just doesn't. Weak leadership. A good leader recognizes the skills that he lacks. Let me tell you, I, this is personal, personal opinion. I hire men way light years smarter than me. That work harder than me that have skills I could not fathom to have because what I'm good at, that's what I'm hired to do. That's what I do. But I need people better in the areas so we can win. And as they go on, I take whatever that they've learned and I give it to someone else. And when the cycle keeps going, I'm not afraid of someone better than me in an area. I like that. And then I can promote that. I can grow that. I can learn from them. I don't have that kind of ego where if so oh, this guy works better than me, so I'm not going. You know how many look, any y'all anybody that works in retail or has a management that you know, you're like, how the hell did you get in this business? How did you not get that position without getting on your knees once or twice a week? You know, that kind of stuff. Because and you ever notice who they promote are just or equally as bad or worse. I have a theory by that. You can only promote what you do. What do I mean by that? If you know that you're weak in an area. I want someone to be strong in that area so that I can go I can be strong in my area. And then there's those that say, well, the opposite. Oh, I know I'm weak in that area. So I'm going to make sure that anybody that's strong in that area, I'm not going to give them a chance because they can take my job. I ain't afraid of anybody taking my job. I'm afraid of never growing. You know, I am not the the uh, what is it? The there's I have some great kids at work. All these kids are fantastic. They can do things that I could not imagine to do. However, I've learned how to do the things that I'm not good at. I, it may take me longer, but I have to learn what I'm doing just in case they're not there. Philip, you're in a position to where you're the boss, you're the employee, you're the technical advisor, you're the director, you're the writer, you're the uh, what? You're the folly work. You do the foley work. You do the script. Script. Um. You, you know, you're part of the you're part of the catering. You do the whole theater. 
And you fail at all of it because you think somehow it should magically work. If YouTube crashed today, let's say it went down for eight hours. Would Philip have another avenue to go? He would get on Twitter and complain how sorry YouTube is. That's the extent of it. What if his, his computer crashed and he, he, he can't get it up and running? What's he going to do? Of course, he's going to call a technician and blah, blah, blah. Then he's going to get on stream, say how sucky the technician is. And it just, it's just that snowball issue that, that, I, that I've heard about with Philip. When things go bad, it just gets worse. But for him in business, he could stem the bleeding by simply outsourcing someone. But again, he'd have to trust them. And Philip don't trust nobody. Philip don't trust nobody. Philip barely trusts Philip. Which means, guess what? Since he also thinks he's the smartest person in the room, since he's the only one that's been doing this for 13 years, he can't rely on anybody either because he doesn't want to give up that sense of control. If he does, he doesn't know if that person is going to actually screw him over or it, they can outshine him. That's what I really think. They can, I, You know, it's not hard to outshine Philip, but his reaction to that was to get rid of him because he can't stand not being the man and he ain't even close they will also communicate direct reward offer the opportunity for personal growth to their employees creating a happy effective loyal team poor leadership on the other hand leads to demotivated ineffective teams which can easily cripple a business that's his customer base right now those that are willing to help him He's not only he complains on every stream, calls them idiots and stupid and trolls. And, and it does, remember, he's attacking people. These are people that are giving him money, by the way. They're the ones getting the brunt because the trolls ain't getting nothing. You can't cuss a troll out there laughing already. No, he's cussing out people that have a stake in him. He's pissing on they Kool-Aid or pissing in they Kool-Aid. And, and what is that going to come to? How's that come? So when they become a detractor, I used to be a Phil fan now, but the tractor, he can't figure out what happened. It's, it's somebody else's fault, not his. Ineffective leadership, Philip, is killing your business because you're the leader. There is the buck stops with you, quite literally. Nobody else, you can't blame anybody else. You can't blame YouTube because they, the ads went down. You can blame yourself by not creating another revenue source. You can't blame Twitch for kicking your you kicking your, your monkey ass off because of what? Because you're the toxic human being that's on there. You get to look at that. It wasn't anybody else that did that to you. You did that to you. You did that. A good leader recognizes his own weaknesses and gets others so that it can be strong. Ooh, I got a weather report coming through. Sorry about that, guys. But you understand what I'm saying? Philip is in a position to where there are people that legit want to help him, but he's made, he's dug himself in such a hole. He can't trust anybody anymore. And when you can't trust your own team, or he doesn't have a team, but if you can't trust people that are there trying to be there for you, that are tipping you, that are, are trying to be your mod or trying to help you. If you can't trust them, you on borrowed time, homie. Borrowed time. Weak leadership, man. You got how do you motivate somebody to tip when you call always calling them they suck and how dare them sit in the chat and not speak and how dare them it's interesting. So you're the streamer and you demand the people to do more work than you are. They have to keep the chat going because you don't want to talk to them. And if they're not, they're stupid, they're idiots. I don't know why you wasted my time. It's always someone else's fault but yours because the leadership it comes from the top and it rains down homeboy the reason why your stream is horrible is because your leadership matches that same horribleness sorry to be that honest not really but it is what it is man you are the reason your business is not working you don't have any employees because you are the employee Imagine if any one of us had an employee like Philip that y'all were counting on to do a job. It would never get done. Just saying. Now we've come to the apex. The 
the the creme de la creme. We have come to the mountain. Moses has come down with the two tablets. In our case, one article. And this is Philip. Are you ready? Over dependence on a few big customers. So Dollar Tree Ahab, which is Philip, an over dependence on a few big customers could easily lead to business failure if one of them suddenly pulls out. Both cash flow and profit will ultimately be hit. The temptation can then be offered discounts to that customer. However, this will only lead to poor margins over the longer terms. Minimize your risk by increasing your customer base, diversifying your product portfolio, and encouraging your customers to sign contracts with reasonable notice. So he has the memberships, but there's nothing to offer them. What does he offer? You can get an ugly emote. You can get that stupid crown on your head and you get to support me and keep me in business. That doesn't make me want to shop at Walmart. What about his diversity, diversifying his portfolio? Doing the, the round the rabbit hole is not diversifying your portfolio, Philip. How about you not stream video games and try something else? Why not for a week say, man, we're going to go, we're going to do movie reviews. We're going to do, well, see, that would actually mean you want culture, which Philip doesn't have any culture because he doesn't want to learn anything. But you have to get out there. You've got, if all, if three of your whales, Philip, got carpooned, skinned, and their oil is now in some uh, bathhouse. So now they got these big, huge um, uh, shamu smelling, uh, what is it? Shamu smelling uh, or green kind of scent in there. Now you, your whales are gone. What you going to do, Philip? How you gonna make money? How you gonna squeeze out that hundred dollar tip that somebody drops in one in, in in one string or twice a string? What you gonna do when they gone? Cause after you keep pissing them off and calling them idiots and stupid and retarded and all these other horrible names, and they finally say, you know what, dude, kiss my ass, and they're out. What you gonna do then, Philip? You can't make a guppy into a whale. They the the two don't go together. Just you can't do that. You can't transform that guppy into a whale. You can make that guppy fat or you can make that dude skinny, but you can't make him into a whale. Over dependence on the big customer. I remember before the gifted membership, what'd you do? I lowered the membership goal, guys, because you offer nothing for people to want to do it. At all. At all. If not for gifted memberships, which you don't give a damn about. Because that, look, you can't, you, gifted memberships are important to you, Philip, because they don't give you cash. They don't give you liquidity up front. That's long term. YouTube is trying to keep your business afloat by paying you once a month. Teachers get paid once a month. Do you think, and how many teachers are there for 30 something, 40 something years because they've learned how to manage and budget their finances? You don't do that, Philip. You relying on these big customers and look at this. Look at what's the discount you're offering them. Well, I'll give them first say so in the game. I'm going to play that. I'm going to suck at. That's not a benefit, Philip. It's not a benefit. The few customers, the few people that give you big dollars are the very people you trash and beat up day after day. How do you do it? I don't cuss them out here. I don't call them stupid. They listen to this depressing ass stream day after day. They watch you fail at every video game you play. And when they do give you insight and they say, hey, man, why don't you try this? You're stupid. That's nothing work. I've been playing this for this long, man. You're stupid. You don't know anything. And plus, it's not going to give me support. You made it so obvious. All you care about is money that their input is useless. Unless they pay you, they are non-existent and not important. You've become so fattened. Off of old deeds. You were at one point a big name, Philip. You were the man at one point, Philip. You once created something that other people have taken and ran with it. They took your model and made it better. You've given detractors careers because they have took what you did and do and they transformed it into something better. 
to where now people are tuning into them more than you and you're where it comes from. Do you know how weird that looks? People are profiting off you and you can't even profit off yourself. How did that happen? And somewhere, somehow, you have figured out that success by giving in and doing what the viewers want is somehow negative. You don't want unique viewers. You just want an ATM. You don't want to actually hone your craft. You just want craft macaroni and cheese, the cheapest stuff you can get from the Dollar Tree. You don't want to get better. You want the tips to be better. This is a failed business model, Philip. And let's be honest, it's not a business. I've set out to prove to you guys and to Phillips, uh, his Phillips supporters, look, guys, I, I, I'm just trying to keep it real with you. This is not a business for Philip. He doesn't actually own anything in this business. What product he does have is not real product. It's him sitting on a stream, playing badly, demanding support, and you're rewarding him. And you're not helping him grow as the business. If you want Philip to grow, stop tipping him. That would force him to budget his money. It would. If you really want to help Philip. Trolls, if you really want to help Philip, don't tip him. Just don't. It will help him in the long term if he wants to survive. Right now, he is a wounded animal limping on borrowed time. And the wound that took him down that's, that he's limping on is festered and it's got gangrene and it's dying and it's, it's, it's got to get severed. And he won't, if he can't do it, you guys got to do it. I set out to do one thing and I try, I wanted to make a video about how ungrateful Philip is with his memberships, but it turned into be this thing after doing more research into liquidity. This might not be the most entertaining video I've ever made, but I needed to get this out because I need all this all need to see this for what it is. Philip, he doesn't have a business. Philip is simply a streamer with no goal. There's no end game. Quite literally, he's living paycheck to paycheck and he doesn't have to. This is self exile for the most part. This is self isolation. Philip is doing this in spite of Philip. And I, it doesn't even make sense. And you can't get him to see that. And anybody that tries is now a detractor and a troll. Philip, you don't have a business. You have a bust. It's time to make a change, homeboy, before the bubble freaking blows the hell up. You got to, man. But you know, it wouldn't be something... Unless the Lord has his say. And now we have reached a point to where the Lord has his say. And we're just going to stick at verse five, because this is the most relevant and important to this episode. Philip, if you're listening and for those that are listening, keep your life free from the love of money. Be satisfied with what you have. For he himself has said, I will never leave you or abandon you. Therefore, we boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can man do to me? You know, Philip, and for anybody listening, it is so critical that when we look at someone like Philip, and Philip, if you see, when you see yourself, everything that you exist for is money-based. When you do that, you rob yourself of the ability to enjoy the very things that you have. You don't have to have the most current, the most new, the best this or the best that. What you need to have is the contentment to enjoy the things that you can have. If there's an opportunity to make more and to get more, great. But not at the sacrifice of your integrity. And your peace of mind. There's nothing wrong with pushing yourself uh, to your limits here and there to, to, to get out of your comfort zone. But when the only thing that matters is winning, 
You forget about that huge journey along the way. You forget about the character growth, the people that you meet, the friendships that are built. Chasing money, will you will find yourself getting closer to that grave. And let's be honest with each other. I'm, and I'm not the guy that rings the bell and say we should all be poor. That ain't what I'm saying at all. But you think about something. If you had the money to buy everything you've ever wanted, what do you do next? What's left after that? See, that's that long range thinking that Philip can't wrap his mind around. And here's a guy that's made millions, millions of dollars. And it's still not enough because he he thinks and desires and he deserves more. He will never be content. He has a black hole in his soul that nothing can ever fill. It can only consume. And it can change. Many of us have been there. I can relate to that personally on Philip. I was addicted to money. Addicted to money. The minute I made it, I felt better. It made me feel stronger. It made me feel sexier. It made me feel all types of, of, of egotistical things. And then when I didn't have it, I felt like the worst human being ever. Living like that is a miserable existence. There are some people that live paycheck to paycheck that have more vibrant lives than Philip. And it's sad. There is nothing wrong with making money. There's nothing wrong with having nice things. There's nothing wrong for aspiring for greater. The problem is when the money becomes the focus, not the means on how you get it. When we watch Philip beg and beg and beg for money he did not earn with his own hands he can't logically use it why because it was gained criminally and i mean to say that in every sense ill-gotten gains you don't know how to handle it and manage it why because you didn't earn it when you can earn the money that you have when you slaved with your own two hands. You've worked that job for 40, 50, 60 hours. When your paycheck comes, you know the value of what it costs to get there. You know that when you pay this phone bill and you pay that light bill, you know there's a stake, there's blood in it. Philip has been getting money and has yet to earn a dime of it. And with that, he blows through it. That principle is the same principle why if someone wins the lottery, a year or two later, they're broke. Why? Because they didn't earn it with their own two hands. You can't value something if you didn't earn and work for it. He hasn't worked for a dime in his life. And now we see that we, we see it. He's now living for money. And law teaches money. It is it, it, like water. It runs right. You can, you can cup your hands and water will still peek through. That's that's money. It's meant to come and go. It's what it's true. If you put it in a bank, the bank's still going to use it. It don't just sit there. And if it's just sitting there, imagine if something, it can be burned, it can be destroyed. You know where I'm going. Keep your life free from the love of money. Why? Because it will place you in the same position that we see Philip. And man, that breaks my heart a lot of nights. That's why I cannot watch Philip for more a few times than I can. I, I can't do it. Now, I'm going to close out here. I love you very much. Lord, Philip, you need to get a clue quick, man, because you don't look healthy, brother. I love you guys very much. I will see you guys soon. Thank you for tuning in for the video. I know it's long, but if you enjoyed yourself, a like and subscribe would be great. It don't cost nothing to hit that subscribe button, but you will gain a lot of friendship, let me tell you, because our community is the most unique community than anybody else on this planet. We are made up of believers and non-believers, and we all come together with knowing that a decent human being is the one thing we should at base level strive for. Love you very much. I will see you guys soon. In Jesus' name, I'm praying for you. Amen.